Welcome back. I'm Nan Jokerst, and in this video, we're going to talk about how to achieve low pressure, also called high vacuum, using a turbo pump. Mechanical pumps alone cannot typically reach pressures low enough for thin film, high quality deposition. So we need to use another pump, a high vacuum pump, in addition to the mechanical pump. Remember that air molecules in the vacuum chamber will introduce impurities in the deposited film. We can use mechanical pumps to remove some of this air, but there is a limit to how many air molecules a mechanical pump can remove from the vacuum chamber. So we need to continue to pump after we use the mechanical pump to achieve much lower pressures in the vacuum chamber for very high purity deposited films. Since the high vacuum pumps don't function at atmospheric pressure, we need to start with the mechanical pump and then use a high vacuum pump. The two high vacuum pumps that we will present in this course are turbo molecular pumps and cryogenic pumps. The turbo molecular pump, or in the lingo of the trade, a turbo pump, is capable of reaching much lower pressures than a mechanical pump alone. First, we rough pump the system with a mechanical pump, and then we use the turbo pump afterwards. But there is a catch. A turbo pump needs a helping hand. It cannot pump alone. It gets help, or we say is backed, by a mechanical pump. This simply means that the air from the output of the turbo pump is removed by the mechanical pump. So we are going to use the mechanical pump in two different ways. First, to rough out the vacuum system from atmospheric pressure to about 10 torr so that we can turn on the turbo pump afterwards. Second, we use that mechanical pump to back the turbo pump. The design of a turbo pump is quite simple. It consists of several turbines spinning at high speed. Similar to a tennis racket hitting a ball, air molecules are hit by the angled turbine blades and are bounced out of the chamber and into the turbo pump. There are many turbine blades, and this happens many times as shown in this animation. As the air molecules in the chamber near the pump are decreased in number, the rest of the air molecules in the chamber diffuse toward the turbo pump where there's less air. The air molecules that the turbo pump collects make their way out of the outlet of the turbo pump, which then are pumped by the mechanical pump that is backing the turbo pump. The pumping ability of a turbo pump is related to the speed of the turbines, which typically spin at 50,000 revolutions per minute or more. Compare that to a typical mechanical pump, which rotates at less than 5,000 revolutions per minute. Now this is still pretty fast. A helicopter rotor typically spins at only 400 to 500 RPM. High vacuum pumps can achieve 10 to the minus 6 torr for depositions, and they can achieve even lower pressures than that. But they're typically limited by small leaks in the system or in gaskets, or if the system outgasses, which means there are air molecules of trapped gas in the system, they tend to come off the chamber walls as the pressure decreases. We can do a bake out where we increase the temperature of the chamber to drive these molecules off of the walls with heat. That can help to reduce outgassing, but this is usually not necessary for thin film deposition systems. A turbo pump can routinely evacuate a large vacuum chamber to 10 to the minus 7th torr, or equivalently 1.3 times 10 to the minus 5 pascals. Pressures on the order of 10 to the minus 6 torr are fine for most thin film depositions, and a correctly sized turbo pump will pump out a chamber in about one hour. Turbo pumps are one high vacuum pump option. Be sure to look at the cryo pump video as well to learn about another commonly used high vacuum pump. 